Welcome to the Nose Love Podcast. I am Father Michael. And I'm Molly. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to you too. Thank you. <laughs> well. Here we are. You're not you're in priest clothes today. I had a I spoke at our grief group and then I went had a funeral. Is your the grief group is like is it's not specifically faith based, right? Am I wrong about that? It's faith based. It's not specifically Catholic. Okay. So it's you just like, hold it here. Well, parishioners do it. Okay. But it's pretty general. Okay. Um like just so Christian there's, Yeah, there's not there's non Catholic people that come to it. Okay. Just people come. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you speak about? They just kind of like they came up with some questions about heaven oh, cool. ahead of time, and then like, uh, and then whatever came up in the moment. That's probably helpful to uh, just like kind of closure type of questions. Yeah, cool. is it mostly like death type of grief? Like they've oh, all oh, lost, it is. That's they've all, all lost it is, a loved yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it really like a surprising variety of family members that. Yeah. Yeah. That have passed. Yeah, it's really good. I'm glad that we have it. Like I just go like kind of like once per time that they do it and do this sort of thing. But how often do they have it? A couple times a year, I think. I think they have a holiday one. Okay, because that's often hard for people. That's really good. Kind of this longer version. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! That is really awesome that they have that. Yeah. Anyway. And then had a funeral, and so that's why. Funeral. Wow. She ran around today. Yeah. Was it like funeral here? No, it was at the funeral home, and then the Uh, cemetery was like. A half hour drive from the, because you're going slow too, but it's yeah. way out there past. You can have a funeral at a funeral home. There are funerals outside of mass. Oh, okay, you can do that. Forgot about that. I don't know why. Like I don't always know why people. Why it's they still want like that. a Catholic funeral? Yeah, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. just to stay all at one place. Yeah, it didn't seem like a ton of Catholic people at it, so mm-hmm. I don't know. That could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you do in those cases, like when it's not mass? Um, but still a funeral. It's kind of like a wedding without mass. That it's the readings and prayers, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, today we're not talking about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Well, you. This was your idea again. This is in my my. You were on a roll. Dumping of ideas. Yes. And bring it. Bring more. it to the table. I don't think we've ever talked about something like this, but what to do when you're stuck in a rut. Like in your faith or just life? I think maybe in general. Okay. And that could include faith. Yeah. Yeah. Are you we, stuck in a rut, Father Michael? <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Because <laughs> we talked about, we have definitely talked about like praying when it's hard to pray or if your prayer life feels yeah, dry. Yeah, we talked about like aspects of this, but not like this is yeah. a topic, I don't think. I've definitely been there before. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say is like the longest rut that you've been in? Oh. That might be a weird question, but. I don't even know. I know I was that I that came to mind for myself. I'm like, I don't know. There's phases where just things are more difficult and what would you describe like being in a rut as? Like everything's hard, I feel like is you... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a part of it. It's like you, everything becomes harder. Yeah. Or like I think for me, some of the harder experiences where it's like can't seem to make progress or just yeah. like you're treading water. Can't and... seem to catch a break. Yeah. And so that's, you know, I think we all go through that. And maybe it's tied to like, I don't know, this is speculating, losing a job or leaving, moving someplace new or just like feeling kind of out of sorts. Yeah. And I think there's a difference because like sometimes life can be like hard, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're in a rut. Like sometimes maybe I'm going through something difficult, but for whatever reason, I'm I feel a lot of hope and I. Mm -hmm. I'm getting through it. And there's other times where like things are difficult and I'm like really stuck at the same time. So I don't think it necessarily corresponds with hardship. I mean, it usually does, but like sometimes it's harder than others, I guess. It's just like, yeah, you you could feel out of, it could feel out of your own control as well. I think the hardest thing is when things aren't going badly and you're just kind of stuck. And you're like, I have no reason to feel this way. Yeah. Are we just talking about depression? (laughs) Oh, Wow, that was, I could hear that one. That was a loud <laughs> laugh. Jeez. Um, That's part of it, I think. Or probably, but I don't think everybody exper- experiences it you as funny, depression. You made a funny noise. What I did. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> <laughs> I think you were just starting probably. Starting to say probably. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I could not hear it. I'm going to play that back, please. <laughs> um, You'll probably make a song about it or I'm something. I'm sure. Yeah. It, I, I think that 
that does sound like what depression is like but i also feel like sometimes it just it happens to people like mm-hmm. i think we all experience it whether like it could be a like depressive time whether or not it's yeah. like depression itself oh you know yeah what yeah I mean? yeah but it is depressing that's for sure <laughs> yes and even i think maybe another aspect of it is i don't know maybe nothing feels new not even new but like everything kind of you're going through the motions yeah and that's always a I don't know. If you become suddenly aware of that, it feels like you're going through the motions. Like, okay, yeah. time for, to do something about this. For me, it's oftentimes more mm. like I feel like everything is a chore. Mm. And that's like when I know I'm like in a rut is when I'm like, oh, even like the normal things that I technically have to do, I feel the weight of like having to do everything. Yeah. And like I feel like the weight of responsibility in my life more. And I'm not as able to find like joy in the things that I have to do and mm-hmm. like my responsibilities um yeah because the truth is like there are things we have to do in in life and you know and that's okay responsibilities (laughs) and like just doing those things you're not always going to feel good about them yeah that's okay do you um do people like talk to you about this a lot do you feel like yeah i think it comes it's in the form of just like they come and talk and they don't know what to what the problem is yeah i just feel like yeah like i mean i pray uh but they're just not satisfied or like, um, and it's usually it's tied into prayer and maybe just whatever their life and their vocation of just like not feeling, they're not feeling a ton of joy in it. And I think that's often to me is, is, is like, it feels like a particular thing of, okay, maybe not, maybe something's not terribly wrong, but they just need to, things need to be shaken up or looked at in a new light to, to find that meaning again. Yeah. What's like the advice that you usually give people? Because I feel like that's a hard thing to give advice on. It is. Yeah. (laughs) It's really like daunting when somebody comes with that, like a, even if they wouldn't call it a crisis, a crisis like that. of just like I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know either. I'm not quite sure myself. (laughs) Um, Obviously prayer is huge. Um, And I think like honest prayer, as we always talk about is really important of, like God, this is what I feel, and this and it is, sucks right now, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and like getting to the truth of what you think, like because it's easy to hide. Like, I don't want. I'm not a therapist. It's easy to like hide. Just go for true. it. It's <laughs> like we could get stuck on like a sin or like a a thing that we're struggling with, and then but that can hide the like. Oh, this is why I'm doing that. This is why I'm falling to that or giving. Yeah. In. Or like I'm seeking relief through a sin or totally just a problematic behavior. And it's just like, uh, what's actually happening? And that's yeah. always helpful to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's also good to like, if you find yourself in that place, this doesn't always resolve it, but I think it can sometimes like thinking about what's going on in my life, like trying to pinpoint the why. Mm-hmm. I've definitely been in times where I'm like, there is no why it's just kind of happening. But also I've been in times where it's like, Oh, like, no, yep, it's kind of related to what you're saying. Like, maybe I'm struggling with this particular sin, or maybe I'm really not showing up to pray. Or maybe, like, I have this relationship in my life that's really hard right now, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of impacting everything else about my life because it's such a big part of life right now. Or maybe I've been sick lately. Like, you know, like, sometimes it's even, like, (laughs) a physical thing. Like how people say, like, if you're grumpy, like, are you hungry and are you tired? Yeah, first, yeah. like, try to resolve those two things. <laughs> Drink some water. <laughs> first, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, And, yeah, definitely that is not always, it's not like, if you're in a rut, like, just to have a glass of water, that'll yeah, always yeah. resolve it. But I think sometimes, like, it's just good to have that self-awareness. Cover the basics. Yes, yeah. totally. At least mm-hmm. help yourself as much as you can. Yeah. Um, By yeah. looking at those, like, needs that we have, like, relationally, physically, spiritually like are they being met and like yeah if one of them is lacking like think of a practical way of how to address it like if it's spiritual maybe maybe start talking to a spiritual director if you find that it's mostly coming from like feeling lost spiritually find someone to talk to about it because sometimes Mm -hmm. i'm like it's not it's not always a struggle with prayer for me sometimes i'm like i'm really showing up in prayer i'm just like really still feeling this way yeah and actually like being guided in that is what has been really helpful to me sometimes totally it's sometimes just that other person's perspective mm-hmm. can make a huge difference because you could be missing something. And that's, that's what you made me think of is like, 
we can so easily live life on autopilot yeah. and just do the things that we need to do and what we all what we've always done and they may be really good things but uh to me it's like well like am i doing it intentionally and remembering why i'm doing what i'm doing that could be a huge help like checking back in yeah like okay i pray um maybe i should change how i pray because i'm just taking for granted that i just show up and do this and that's what it is yeah yeah but uh but i don't know living intentionally seems to be really helpful to me of okay what what is actually most important you know god and my relationships of like what do I actually need to focus on? Maybe I've strayed away from that. Yeah. I like that you said living intentionally too, because mm-hmm. like sometimes battling these things, it's just like an active choice. Mm-hmm. I know when I'm going through stuff like this, I tend to isolate and I want to, and I don't like spending time with people. Mm-hmm. So I have to very intentionally choose to spend time with people. Yeah. So that I don't get like go deeper into it. Or maybe it's, Maybe for someone else, they spend a lot of time with people because they can't handle being by themselves. Yeah, like, they try it's to hide di- it. Right. It's different for all of us, um, like what we tend to do. Mm-hmm. So being aware of like our our tendencies, I would say, not even weaknesses necessarily, just like how we tend to operate as a person, what our how our personality responds to certain things and knowing like, okay, this this helps me, this does mm-hmm. not. Zach is someone who needs to be around people when he's like, not feeling great like yeah that sometimes helps me like i just said like i i tend to isolate but also sometimes if it's like an isolated instance i need to be alone for a Mm -hmm. night so just knowing those differences between us like if he's not having a good day i'm like let's hang out with someone yeah Uh, but even though that might not always be what's best for me if i'm having a bad day so Mm -hmm. that like self-awareness is important because then in the moments when things are hard you can hopefully find the like strength to choose to do what's good for us even when we don't want to yeah which is hard but Mm -hmm. then we don't make things worse for ourselves yeah which is a common thing i feel like i think we do that sometimes by like i don't know subconsciously like what's our standards for like a good life yeah and sometimes we're not thinking about like what god actually wants for us it's just well i have to do these things and maybe it's Mm -hmm. job or like what you know what your time looks like I know for me sometimes to step back, like, yeah, like just to, you know, example from my real life, like Mm -hmm. there's lots of things that I need to do and problems that like I'm involved in of like dealing with situations. um, Lots of fires you need to put out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That are like, you know, part of my responsibility. Right. Um, But I can't measure like my goodness or my life based just on those things oh yeah or else you're just always going to be frustrated um and so yeah just thinking about like what are the you know what are you measuring yourself by and maybe it's the wrong standard like rather than god's yeah and i think it's huge to remember too to not like like to kind of as much as this sucks like in a certain sense of just like ride the wave till it's done Mm. Because sometimes I'm like, what do I need to do? And sometimes the hard thing is there's not always a ton you can do. Like if you're checking all those boxes of like your physical, your spiritual, your relational needs, if you're doing everything that like is practically helpful Mm -hmm. and if you're realizing that, okay, okay, maybe I just need to like kind of let go and let God, so to speak, um, then you just kind of sometimes need to wait for the storm to pass a bit Mm -hmm. so then i think the question is like okay well then what do we do in that because it's not as simple as just like all right just wait until it's better like something that came to mind with for me is like letting the people who know you ground you like remain grounded by the things in your life that haven't changed like relationships with people who can see you Mm -hmm. And who knew you before you were going through this and who can remind you of like kind of reality when you're lost from it. Things like that. I don't know if you have anything else that you th- can think of with that. I like the that you said the grounded because that's kind of what it is of like, okay, get back to the foundation. Mm-hmm. And I don't, like, I don't know, believing those people is helpful of tr- trusting the people that actually love you to say like, don't panic or yeah. like, uh, you're not doing anything wrong or whatever it is like that's really helpful to to get back to the truth and like the truth of god 
is that like okay he he loves me all the time um he wants what's best for me and that's always true yeah and and so i think like even if he's allowed this whatever moment you know hard thing that you're going through or even if it's you know like but what we're talking about no certain thing but just life is hard yeah um okay what he wants to do something good with it and then you can kind of be on the lookout for it yeah rather than just well this is all bad and it's only going to be bad rather like well there's something you know something good going to come from this and that kind of takes the pressure off of you in those mm-hmm. situations i think we can make those moments like worse when we're like i need to fix this i need to but like choosing to rest and like god's going to work in this mm-hmm. like can be helpful and it's also never good to like make big decisions or <laughs> things like that when you're feeling like this so like yeah. not only it would be really hard to but you probably shouldn't change that much about your life if you're in a rut mm-hmm. <laughs> that's like so like classic advice i hear all the time like mm-hmm. don't what's the, it's, it's is it uh ignatius yeah like is consolation it, and desolation yeah like don't make a some something like don't make a decision in a time yeah. of desolation don't like a big, a big decision don't leave right. your marriage <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah things like that mm-hmm. um and even like smaller things um yeah, like it's not the time to majorly change your life. It's kind of the time to like sit still and trust as hard as that is in those moments. Like yeah. that's really all you can do. We have those kind of stereotypical sense. ideas of like, well, like a midlife crisis or yeah. I don't know, even like you go cut your hair drastically that might uh, <laughs> dye your hair or something. Yeah. Um, doesn't really affect me. But uh, <laughs> the uh, I wonder what it would look like if you dyed your hair black. You'd probably see a little bit of it then. Because <laughs> it, it's like it the same color anything, as yeah. your head right now, uh-huh. kind of. Mm-hmm. No offense. It's it's me colored. <laughs> it's me oh. colored. So you're blonde. Right? I mean, it Blondish. was. Yeah. I think it's darker now than it used to be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like when I cut my hair, it's like brownish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was real blonde when I was when little. you were younger. Mm-hmm. I've seen the prom pictures. <laughs> <laughs> they have too. <laughs> I don't even know what I was gonna say. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's Went off okay. Track. Yeah. Dying your hair. Oh, like drastic <laughs> decisions. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, right. <laughs> talk to people that care about you <laughs> before you dye your hair. No, yeah. like I, I gave my, got my nose pierced one time, and I was like, "This isn't technically permanent." That's <laughs> I'm not, true. I'm not saying this is good advice, but mm-hmm. well, that yeah, that's what I'm not. Th- not that that's that crazy. No, but that like don't necessarily just make rash decisions. It can feel like I got to do something drastic. Totally. And maybe, I don't know, is it ever true that we should do something really, we shouldn't do anything that's going to permanently affect us. Without thinking about it. When we're in a bad place. Oh, yeah, yes, that, for yeah. sure. And probably like talking to somebody that cares about us with yeah, thinking about it. Um, and I think that uh, when we, maybe like with what we're talking about, if it's just kind of everything's a slog. Like doing little new things is probably helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Working on new habits, um, looking for new ways to connect with God, could be really helpful. Yeah, I think leaning on others is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some, I'm I'm gonna try to I have to think of how to word this to keep it anonymous. So someone I know called someone else I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like at a certain time <laughs> basically because they were like i think i need to like break up with this person mm. and the person that they were talking to was like oh aren't you like going through a really hard time right now like they were kind of struggling with like a, a rut <laughs> yeah. at that time it was like yeah and they were like how's your relationship going tell me about your relationship oh, it's good like there's no problems at all it's just me and it was very much just like a they were going to break up with this person because they felt like they were burdened because they were in such a huge yeah, rut. And yeah. the other person didn't. They weren't like asking them about it at all. Everything was good with them. And the person they were talking to was like, now it's not the time to do that. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we're able to have a conversation. And the person was like, yeah, you're right. Like that was going to that was not the decision to make. But it was cool because they went to someone they knew and loved and trusted and was like, I mm-hmm. think I need to make this decision. They didn't just go and like break up with the person. Yeah. And now things are great. Like and 
But I think we've all experienced like that panic moment that can come when you're yeah. in a rut. I think you brought up a really good point of like sometimes it just I think this is why people pierce their nose after breakups or things like mm-hmm. that. Like you just feel like you need to do something. Yeah. When your life feels out of control. It's almost like a grasp for control. It is like I can do this. Like I can yeah. control this, even if it's like not gonna, not a good idea. It mm-hmm. was my decision. Yeah. Sometimes we get into a rut because things are happening against our will. Mm-hmm. But it's never helpful. Like the the hardest thing is usually the most helpful thing, which is to just like sit and write it out and do all of the right. It's not like you just have to sit alone. Right. But you do have to sometimes just sit and wait. But there's support that you can seek. Again, fulfilling those needs spiritually, physically, um, relationally, mm-hmm. whatever else. Those are the three I've been thinking of. But f- yeah. making sure those needs are met. It um, seems like the difference to me of between like, if you're having a really hard time, like, you know, going out to eat with a friend and talking through everything versus like, I'm going to go get wasted. Totally. Yeah, like that, yeah. Because that like that's an escape. Yes. And I think, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's good to realize what we use for escapes. Yeah. And that could be it could be something like that of like, you know, not being conscious anymore. Of like, right. But it also could be like, <laughs> not being work, conscious anymore. you know, like, <laughs> fair enough. T- yeah. Or like working too hard. <laughs> totally. Or, oh, yeah. Um, I think that's a huge one that we don't think about as being bad for us because mm-hmm. it's like, I'm just working. But you like, just put that first. Yes. Yeah. Or busyness. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you hide, you hide or I don't know, you ignore the thing that's like the wound that's actually there. Yeah. It is it is really important when you're feeling disengaged to engage even more. Mm. And I think our tendency when we're feeling disengaged is to disengage even more. Yeah. So like to turn to things like whether it's well, drunkenness or like sexual sin or or just like isolation. Just scrolling. Totally. That, that's something if I'm stressed out. Like, it's so easy for me to just, like, I'm going to hide hide from the world. Totally, totally. Yeah, it's not always these big things that we think of as mortal sins that we need to confess. Like, sometimes the more dangerous ones are the things that blend in more, like just overuse of social media Mm -hmm. or or isolation or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, But we have to fight to engage. Like, I think that would be, like, my biggest piece of advice because I know these are the times when I want to disengage the most. But, like, you you can only help yourself by engaging more in mm-hmm. your relationships, in the life around you, in your hobbies, in your spiritual life, like yeah. in everything and in the situation that's going on. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes that can be hard. So it's helpful to do that, like with someone, whether it's a yeah. friend or like a therapist or a spiritual guide or all of the above, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. God wants us to like actively live our lives. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we so often and we're like encouraged to by the I don't know just the world we live in now to just coast totally and, and and not really like take hold of it like amazing things could happen uh you know when we give god a chance and like give him that space to do things but so often we're just it's easier to do the things that we know we're used to or we have to do yeah um and that's not satisfying right yeah Molly. Yes. How has God loved you lately? <laughs> how has God loved me lately? Um, oh, I hate going first because I usually think of mine while you've gone. I did think I did Lainey's birthday last time. Her actual birthday was oh, yeah. this week. Um, so I guess I won't do that again. What did I do this week? Do you have one? Yeah. Okay, you go. I'll think of mine. Uh, so as we're recording this, yesterday... Well, tomorrow is our school's Kairos retreat, the mm-hmm. eighth one. And yesterday, wow. yeah. So <laughs> yesterday uh, is a day we don't have school typically this week because of parent-teacher conferences. So we spend like four hours with them doing a bunch of stuff to get ready for the retreat with the mm-hmm. leaders, and it's just always like super encouraging because especially if I'm like very anxious about the retreat, which I always am, <laughs> um, like just seeing them their excitement and their readiness and even just their joy at like decorating all the name tags and all this like goofy stuff that they do mm. it's like okay it's gonna it's gonna be fine it's all gonna be great. god does this thing totally. and yeah we're ready yeah so yeah that was very encouraging and it's all i always need it at this point yeah because uh we'll be going tomorrow yeah it'll be great i'll mm-hmm. see him monday night yeah that's right come sing. he'll be good mm-hmm. um 
So I would say I've just had some health stuff. I've been trying not to be ambiguous. I'm fine. That I've been trying to figure out lately. And I had an appointment recently where it was like everything's resolved. And that was just a huge relief to because those things can be freaky and like this little nagging thing in the back Mm -hmm. of your head. So to have that off my plate has been really nice. Everything's fine. But yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was like, maybe I shouldn't say this because it sounds so (laughs) freaky, but it wasn't a big deal. But it's all good. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, that's all. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll be back. We will. Send us your ideas. Yes. <laughs> You're on a roll. You don't need ideas anymore. <laughs> I think I only had one that I had texted, one more that I had texted you. So. All right. We have one more week. Then we really need <laughs> then your guys' done. help. <laughs> then we're done. Right. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.